Hello, my name's John Michael Fulger. I've been a professional actor for over 30 years now, and I'm represented by Mary Liz Management. I live in Scotland. Emma. Hello, I'm Emma Spurgeon Hussey. I am in Cornwall. Uh, my agent is Teresa at Filmcast Cornwall and Southwest. I'm an actor, writer, um, director, workshop person, and um, I narrate a lot of audio books as well. Rory. <laughs> Hello, I'm Rory Wilton. I'm a, a television, film, stage, radio voiceover actor. Um, I'm uh, represented by Teresa at Filmcast Cornwall and Southwest, and I and Emma both live here in Cornwall. Erin. I am Erin K. Moffat. I'm from the US. I'm a writer and actor, and I'm excited to read the script. Angela. Hi, my name is Angela Elliott. I've been a script writer, documentary filmmaker, and novelist for about 35 years, and um, represented by Julian Friedman at Blake Friedman. So we're going to read The Parliament of Ebrith Roberts by Gregory Vines. Uh, let me scroll down. Exterior Wales sky day, an imposing white-faced barn owl surveys Hay on Wai, island-like amongst an endless green. Her wings stretch wider. She circles, then dives into the town. Exterior Hay on Wai, High Street Day. Horses lead a funeral cortege, and mourners pass the quaint, misshapen homes, pubs and shops, a modern-day Hobbiton. Exterior Hay on Wai, High Street, Carriage Day. On top of the carriage, immaculate in her tailored funeral director outfit, a grandiose Wallace coin reigns in the horses, Mourners and onlookers wait for her lead. She stands, whips out a trombone and belts out the intro to summertime. Exterior Hay on Wye, High Street, day. Mourners pull out trumpets, tambourines and tuba and play. The horses trot on. Everyone struts and follows. Wallace spots the bar now, hovering over a cottage streets away. She makes an abrupt turn into a narrow lane, surprising the procession. They squash in, dance and follow. Exterior Hay on Wye, Ebris Cottage, day. As the cortege arrives, Wallace sees the barn owl now keeping watch on Ebris's roof. Wallace jumps down from the carriage. Jerry's due at the creme at half past, Miss Con. Wallace bounds to the door. Yes, yes, he's not going anywhere. Wallace goes into Ebris. Yes. Interior, hey on why, Ebris cottage, living room day. The interior is homage to all things owl. In Kitty's world, just here, ma'am. Centre stage, a garish, Jesus-like painting of Ebrith's mother, Sadie. Blue skies, luscious mountains, waterfalls and attentive owls. Tacked to it, a photo of Ebrith, age 10, owl training with Sadie. Ebrith in her best but dated can-do outfit crouches over her model of Hawass, looking up to the painting as Wallace strides in. There's a barn owl on your roof. Ooh, is it Caroline or Tinks? I don't bloody know. You're not up to any nonsense with it, are you? No. Focus on the AGM. I'm on at one. Good, good. Because that model is a vision. And in that Peter Pan collar, <laughs> you're a winner. Really ram it home to those fiends on the board while you must be manager. Now, should I come with you? Shouldn't you get Jerry Evans buried? The faces of the mourners are pressed into the little window. Wallace Coin is as punctual as springtime. Wallace yanks the curtains together. And remember? Wallace claps. Sadie's portrait lights up. It's Owl's hoot. Your glorious mother is with you. Ebrith and Wallace bask in the portrait's glow and hoots. <laughs> Exterior Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, Sugartown Day, a peaceful post-Civil War town, like Hay, eccentric in look and charm, the Doubleday Mansion dominates. Interior Pennsylvania, Sugartown, Mansion, Bedroom Day. Lying in bed, Arnold's monitor hits a final beep and he dies. A distraught, mouse-like Joan grips at the bed. You're the backside and thighs of Poseidon, golden. We would have made tremendous lovers. I promise I'll spend my inheritance wisely. From the display cabinets, hundreds of ceramic owls look down on the scene. Exterior, hey on why, how us day. How a set of flagging damp porter cabins ruins the vista of picturesque hills. Clethwin holds the door as three pensioners ambles in. He checks his pocket watch. Your Roger Moore watch, the drama of that auction. 
You were bidding against that old job from the Bond films. Old Harold Sakata, my nemesis since childhood. But I beat the greedy sword and got Sir Roger forever in my life. Now, in, or it'll be friggin' Christmas by the time we start. Pensioners in, Clethwin shuts the door. Its sign says, closed annual general meeting. Exterior Hayomai High Street Day, Everyth runs along holding her model with pride. At the shoulder of mutton, Malthwin, Christine, Brian and Campbell cheer her on. Waiters exit Tika on Y, whistling and clapping. Residents step out and wave. A screen van, Whippy on Y, plays There She Goes. Christine gets a sudden shiver with a festive like feeling everyone is willing Ebrith on. Interior, hey on my house, family room day. Papers in front of everyone. The AGM starts with Clethwin and board members sat amongst every kind of owl toy. Animated parent owls and their chicks cover the walls. Right. Six agenda items and Ebrith what Roberts. Not the owl wedding sermon. Her and those owls give me the willies. The managing job again. She's got two minutes, and I'm sick of being chair and manager. And to be honest, a donut could run this place. She has ideas. Any good? I can safely say no. So, I don't want. Do we buy a third owl? No. The other two board members shake their heads. And me. Item two. The Christmas do. Turkey and tinsel, please. Turkey and tinsel over at Jericho's disco after. Bethwin's phone rings. He answers the call. <clears throat> uh, Glegg with Mathis. The caller speaks. Yes. I'm chairman here. The bloody sanctuary. God bloody help me. On listening, Clethwin stands and walks out. Interior, hey on why, how was Clethwin's office day? In the cupboard-like room, Clethwin whispers into his phone. Double day who? How much? You're not those bloody Anton Deck, are you? The door just opens and Ebrith's model clumsily enters, door and model pressing into Clethwin. Ebrith squeeze in behind. Yes, yes, I'll call you back. Thank you. Thank you. Ethwin hangs up. Emergency item. Wait here. Don't move. A flustered Ethwin squashes out past Ebrith and leaves. You're the best, Cad. Ebrith checks her phone for messages. Interior Pennsylvania, Sugartown, mansion, bedroom, day. In a near trance, Joan walks back in. To her right is Arnold's body, her left the cabinet of owls. 30 years of service and you leave me $10,000. 30 years. I had to work for it. Administer $10 million to some filthy owl refuge. But I get a surprise. John, Joan steps towards the cabinets. <clears throat> Joan, get your parliament of owls. Joan opens the cabinet, picks an owl and looks closer. She hurtles it across the room, exploding on a wall. Lucky girl, Joan. Joan gets another and throws the owl to the floor. She grabs a handful and hurls them around the room. <laughs> Lucky girl, what a lucky girl. Joan's a lucky girl. <laughs> Invigorated, Joan takes an armful and begins to destroy all. <laughs> Interior, hey on why, how us, Clethwin's office day. Ebrith is ready for the off. She checks her phone, nothing. She dials a number, no answer. She leaves a message. Stacey M, ma'am, love again. Wish me luck. I'm going to get this job. Ebrith hears Clethwin's serious tone. She hangs up, climbs the desk and peeps through a split of window into the next door. Exterior, hay on Y cemetery day. Wallace places an owl and a Bonnie Tyler flower display on the grave. There's your two favorite. There, your two favorites. A tawny fish and Bonnie Tyler, MBE. While it stands to reveal Sadie's tombstone, it reads, Sadie, mother, grandmother, companion, total eclipse of our hearts. She's at the AGM. Manager soon. Damn it, woman, you should be here in all your glory, you and Stacy Ann. Exterior, hey on why, the bluff day. Flashback, Sadie and Ebrith train owls in the blustery wind. Try, Stacy Ann, just try. An owl flies close to Stacy Ann, who's 
all arms crossed and angry. As it gets closer, Stacey Ann smacks it away. Sadie and Ebrith are shell-shocked. We hear the crow crows cawing. Two crows land peacefully on Stacey Ann's arm as if it, that's where they belong. Horrified, Sadie grips onto Ebrith for reassurance. End of flashback. Interior, hey on why, how us? Family room day, Clefwin addresses the board. Ebrith's little face peeks through the glass above. Emergency item board. That was the bank. Seems uh, Madeline, Brian and Ebrith have bollocks up the finances. At the window, Ebrith is surprised at <laughs> Clefwin's words. And, as the board, we're liable for any debt unless, unless we resign now. Today. All in agreement? Everybody's cowardly hand shoots up. <laughs> I'll do the officials. Shut the place up. Should have done it years ago. Every slides down as Clefwin punches the air in delight. Interior, hey on why, how us reception day. We hear the board's car doors slamming and engines starting up. Shirley heads out as Ebrith rushes in. Shirley, Cheryl, I've got a model. No, oh, ask Ledwin, but know this. Turkey and Tinsel's gone tits up this year. As Ebrith follows Shirley out, she hears owls screeching. Interior Pennsylvania Sugartown Mansion bedroom day. With Arnold's body still in the bed, Joan lies embryonic, gripped on top of him. Shards of smashed owls are everywhere, papers in hand. Arnold's lawyer walks into the scene. Miss Gross, these owls, they're McCoy, Martin Brothers, the House of Casa, ceramics worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Joan curls tighter into the fetal position and whimpers. But good news. Your trip to Wales, England, is next week. Premium economy. Interior, hey on why, how us, owl land enclosure day. Owl, Liz and Pepsi shake as Clethwin, cider in one hand, tries to whack them with a tennis racket. Anyone for tennis? Eh, eh? I hate you little monkey canaries. But no more. Ethwin throws the racket at the owls and drinks. I need the dollar. Dollar. Dollar is what I need. Ethwin stops. But I don't. Because I got ten million on the way. I've got old bodies. Names of whiskey and wine. Ethwin whips out his pocket watch, checks the time, then heads to the fire exit. Liz screeches again. Zip it, Tweety Pie. At the back, Ebrith hurries in. On seeing her, the owls start crying. Ebrith rushes to them. Girls, girls, what's wrong? Liz Love? Clet, what's happening? What's a tennis racket doing in the enclosure? Clethwin drinks. Drinking around the girls? And where's the board gone? By two minutes? Shirley said you'd explain. Oh, for Christ's sake, girl. You're ruining my moment. Stop with her in. Ebrith, Liz, and Pepsi are stunned. Your moment? My moment! The manager's job. You said if I... Was it just... This place <laughs> hasn't got a pot to piss in. Nada. So it's saying our baby. Ebrith is stunned. Exterior, hay and why, cemetery day. The barn owl flies over Wallace, lands on Howarth, concerned. Wallace mounts a horse, G's up and gallops towards Howarth. Bewagen, Conrad. Bewagen. Interior, hey on why, how us, or our land enclosure day. Boss, my... Oh, no, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Boss, my a-hole. It's your own management jobs. No qualifications. And you're boring. Clethwin stumbles towards the door. You're an assistant. You assist. Now get those wombles out of here before I roast them. We're closed. Permanently. No, we are not. No. H-O-W-O-S will never close. And this is my time. My moment. Ebrid drills into Clethwin, determined and boldened. Rise. Clethwin glances back. Ebrid lifts her, lifts her arms as if summoning all elements to empower her. Clethwin's stunt. Rise. Up. Rise. Liz and Pepsi energise, their wings expand enormously. <laughs> Clethwin's dumbstruck at their power and Ebrith's dominance. Parliament rise. My Parliament rise. 
Everett's arms take aim at Clethwin. In whisper, her owls take flight, flying higher than they have in years. Pepsi and Liz circle Clethwin, who's hypnotized by their dynamic swirls. The owls take aim and fling themselves <laughs> down at Clethwin. Clethwin collapses in a flurry of wings and claws. So that's the end of our 10 pages. I feel like it should be in capitals, though. It should have been like, right! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just say one thing. I, I think this has been cut. I, I don't yeah. know. There's a, there's a continuous halfway through. Um, mm. I may be uh. wrong, but there's halfway down page five, there is a continuous. Oh, interesting. Now, that normally comes at the end of a page. Now, I've noted that we don't have any continues or continues, continuous mm. at the end of a page. Or the oh, start yes. of page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know that that's not a transition. I don't know what that is. Clethwin's office. Are we in Clethwin's office? No, we were in a family room. So it's mm. not continuous. So that just threw me when I saw that. Yeah. I thought, hang mm. on a minute. So I think you do need to think about your transitions. You don't need cut to every time you move, you change to a scene. Um, mm. In fact, you can kind of forget about them completely unless it's a very jarring cut. You know, it's a very obvious um sort of sort of change um and um um, um yeah th there's a little bit of confusion about who we're introducing when um so characters the first time you meet them need to be in capitals but you don't need to put them in capitals after that first time um sounds need to be in capitals so there's a lot of sounds in there uh, none of which are in capitals um so I would put those. And similarly, the bit where she whips out a trombone and belts out the intro to Summertime, I put that in capitals because that's a really clear sound and it really indicates you want uh, something uh, great sound there. Um, uh, I think this is an amazing idea. I'm a little concerned about getting the owls to act <laughs> um, unless they're going to be digital owls, yeah, you know, CGI know. owls. Yeah. Yeah. They've got a, a lot of heavy lifting to do, these owls have. And uh, <laughs> Being I'm, menaced with um, tennis rackets. I'm, I'm just a little bit concerned and I'm not sure that you will get away with them being bashed by tennis rackets. <laughs> <laughs> um, nobody's going to let you do that. So, <laughs> so again... Um, you might have to think about that, um, but if they're CGI, I guess it would work. You could you could kind of do that. Well, you um, put the no owls were harmed filming this. Exactly, yeah. you, you can't have them ha have them harmed. <laughs> I, I think it's a it's it's an incredible. I don't know. I don't know. Is it is it is it is there too much for half an hour? What do you guys think, John? I enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. But I mean, these are the hours. You just use AI, don't you? That's what a lot of the companies are doing now. And it's just, it is cheaper than it used to be, considerably cheaper. So you probably get away with that. But the continual uh, village day, she pulls out the trombone. Village day, the mourners bring out drums. Yeah. You don't have to complete. Uh, sorry, you don't have to continually put that in no. for every right. paragraph. No. But uh, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I can see an awful lot of humour in it. Some of it quite dark. Some of it extremely light. But, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, and I'm going to read the rest of it mm. tonight. Oh, thank you. Aaron? I think it's good. I think it's well written. I think, you know, it's a lot of characters, but I think it's a pilot so it's like must you know we're in the first 10 pages so it seems like establishing really like um and i would assume that more more stuff's going to be revealed but it kind of like kind of you get a good idea of like the dynamics between the different characters really early on i think which is and that there's some intrigue <laughs> with like um people or owls who have passed before you know um, people and owls, it appears. So I think it's really, I think it's a different concept, you know, like people, I knew, I do know people who love 
owls and bird watching and all this kind of stuff not to this level of like but I think it's 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 I'd like to see what happens I like to see what's going on a little bit more I think it's it's so involved that this is the sort of thing that it's easier to understand if you read like the whole thing which I haven't had a chance to um but yeah and the things that you said like the technical things that you said about like the cut to and um if it's um like some of the descriptions and things stuff. okay thank you emma um i think it was such a really dotty and i really um yeah it really made me laugh um a lot actually it was just um you know it had a, a lot of <laughs> just a lot of kind of bonkersness in it um just a few little things the outline i think maybe I think that maybe this is more clear in the writer's head in so, uh, sometimes than it is in our heads. And um, like, you know how you kind of know <clears throat> you, you're, you're writing something and it's so familiar to you, it becomes so familiar to you that you kind of, you know, we're sort of shorthanding it. And it's like, we hang on, wait, let us catch up a minute because um, the outline says, Joan sets out to woo sanctuary patron Joan Gross. And I think that there must be, a, like somebody's name's been transposed and it says two Jones, which... um is lifelike but um possibly confusing um in scene one i don't know whether the owl is already flying i think the owl either takes flight or is already but it just might be good to help people visualize it is it sitting on a post having a look around or is it flying and we get the bird's eye view of what's happening but just help things be clear in our our heads i think um <clears throat> i'm very impressed by I, I like the um the person that i read sorry i just thought i would <laughs> not do my welsh accent but um i like wallace um this is a really nice intro to her you know with her um funeral director's gear and her trombone and summertime and things but i don't know whether she'd be able to stand very easily while the horses were trotting or whether she'd fall off um but she does sound quite quite heroic so maybe she can stand um, the thing that we always say, really, when and where, we guess it's Wales. Um, but you know, the, the could be it could be absolutely now. You know, because we've got um, we've got this sort of weird, um, sort of almost like Elvis Catholic tat sort of mural of the mum of of Ebrith. And, um, you know, so we, we don't, um, you know, it's kind of brilliant and really visual, actually. Um, but yeah, we just don't quite know when and um, I don't know what a can-do outfit is, and I want to know. And first of all, I didn't know what H-O-W-S was, but then I realised it was Hay on Y Owl Sanctuary. Weirdly, my brother recently moved into an owl sanctuary. That's quite strange. Um, uh, yeah, I like the weird portrait. Um, I like the sudden introduction of Joan and her kind of, you know, <laughs> expression of longing towards the recently deceased Arnold um, <laughs> and, and her um, flinging of, of Fury, owl yeah. effigies is, is lovely. Um I it, it was a bit confusing because I thought that um Joan had simultaneously somehow been left um however many thousand dollars it was and these little owl um figurines and um yeah I was a bit confused about what her her you know legacy was uh I can't always picture what's going on but I think that's because it's really clear in your head and um you know just check that it's clear for other people um and what's the role of magic in this? Because there's something, isn't there, I think? Um, you know, when she does her summoning and suddenly it all becomes a bit sort of <laughs> very Celtic. And um, yeah, and, and I don't know, it reminded me of like the owl service, if anybody ever read that as a child, you know, with the um, magic on those plates and things like that. It had that sort of like ancient magic air to it, as well as lots of very modern and contemporary silliness also so um and there's just some really nice words uh, and um choices of things liz and pepsi as owl names is is um i take off my hat um could you see a person shiver could you how would you show i don't know it's almost like saying a thought i'm just wondering whether we I suppose you could see them shiver couldn't you but yeah just um beware of the very tiny um I um really liked, yeah, just some of the things everybody's cowardly hand rises and the cabinet of owls is just a really nice um there's some really nice fun. You're having fun, but not at our expense. We are also having fun. So um yeah, I look forward to <laughs> to the rest as well. Yeah, I I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it. I've written down um <clears throat> under Milkwood meets Wes Anderson meets this is Jinsey meets league of gentlemen that uh there's there's all sorts of great imagery in there i uh, 
the image of of them going into the tiny room to answer the telephone and everyone's squeezing in <laughs> this tiny little office. And I, yes, I've I've been in little offices. <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah the yeah, yeah I thought there was lots and lots of great visuals in it I I agree with them that it that it doesn't all come off the page um for us to properly kind of visit I can see that it's going to be great um I can imagine it um really quite clearly and I I can sort of see how it should work and I think it has got massive potential um I think it's yeah how to how to get it off the page to sell it and you're gonna need to find a great director who's gonna go i get it wow um that can and a producer that that's gonna get it that and and it's that kind of genre of of tv and film production that you're gonna need to sort of talk to to get it on its on its wings not feet um but yeah i i think there's loads of potential really really enjoyed reading it and um yeah more please <laughs> yeah I think just to, just a one comment about um, the the um, descriptions, the setting, the scenes, and everything. Um, that uh, and as I said at the end of my few comments, I think this is more than thirty minutes. Yeah. Uh, this is a thirty minute script, but actually, looking at the descriptions and the way that it's set out, I think this is more than thirty minutes. And this, this is more like an hour. Yeah, it is more like an yeah. hour. Just what we yes. It is, um, because you can look at things like on page four, and I just want to give you an idea, um, um, Gregory, about this, that you've got uh, the first scene is exterior hair on my high street day. Ebruth Rungel rushes along holding her model with pride. Okay, that's one shot. You then need a break at the shoulder of mutton. We need to identify it as a pub because, you know, so at the shoulder of mutton pub, Muthwing, Christine, Brian and Campbell, we need to know a little bit about them. It's no good just saying they're people. They could be anybody. So just a mm, tiny little yeah. bit. Their ages, you know, um, that sort of thing. Cheer her on. So that's that's another shot. Then you've got another shot as she passes Tika on Y. I mean, even if you're doing this as a long shot where she's running down the street and you're and you've got her in long shot as she does that you've still got passage of time to consider. So if you just put it in one paragraph, that's not going to cover the amount of time that it's going to take her to go between Tikra and Y, which is great name for, for an Indian restaurant, to <laughs> to the, um, you know, the, the ice cream van uh, presumably is parked up somewhere or is going, you don't say whether the ice cream van is parked up or whether it's moving. Um, so and residents step out and wave. So you've got a lot of things happening. You have to think of the time. So you need to break up a paragraph like that into potential shots. It's not necessarily going to how it's going to be shot, but you need to think about time on the page. And I think when you look at the time on the page, you're then going to see it's actually a lot more than this is more than a 30 minute script. And also, I think 30 minutes doesn't do this justice. Mm, I think it yeah. should be an hour. Surely yeah. it should be an hour long yeah. pilot, and so that the next one's an hour long, and the next one because this isn't your regular sitcom, is it? It's your, no. it's it's um it's much more involved and developed. Yeah. Than yeah. It. It's so, a world we've got to learn. Isn't we've it? got like, to really learn the world. Learn. Half an hour is not. Genre, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's a lot in it. Also, you know, you've got several moments where you go cut to Pennsylvania. You know, <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Even if that's Pennsylvania, Wales, <laughs> at some point, <laughs> recreated, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, again, passage of time, and I mean, I love those. I love the fact that Jones stuffed up and broken all the <laughs> yeah, <we'll laughs> <say. laughs> yes, to be yeah. told that there's hundreds of thousands of dollars there. I could visualize her like in this little fetal position, <laughs> crying her eyes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, so fabulous. Yeah. Yeah, great stuff. Just needs tidying up and, and you'll be wonderful. Great. Absolutely yeah. Thank wonderful. you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.